Welcome to Graveyard Crypto. Today's date is March 11th, 2021. The current price of Bitcoin is $57,000. Ethereum is at $1,808. The market cap is around $1.734 trillion. Bitcoin is at $1.063 trillion. And the Bitcoin dominance is at 61.2%. So uh, right now, uh, Bitcoin is... Uh, getting close to the all-time highs again. It hit $58,000 today. Went, it was down uh, last week. I think it was at a low around 43000 But, um, you know, nothing that isn't bad. It was a very healthy kind of correction, just like a normal bull market in the previous cycles. Um, lots of news going on. Uh, we were away for two weeks. So in crypto world, two weeks is like two years. Um <laughs> Yeah, it's yeah. so. Uh, I guess we'll get into some of the things that are going on. Um, I know normally I like to focus a lot on Bitcoin, but there was some big news on Ethereum. Um, if you guys know anything about, there's a network upgrade coming up for Ethereum right now. Anybody know? E59 about that? is that the one? Yeah, uh, EIP Ethereum Improvement Protocol one five five nine. So let me just. Is that what Vitalik was saying? Uh, something about 10xing Ethereum? Um, he said that the transactions, I think, would improve by 100x. Okay. That's, that's the rumor or what he's saying. That would be great, right? Because what is Ethereum at? Like 15 transactions uh, a second, something like that. And as we all know, uh, Jeff, you got to put on share screening. Um, if that we don't know, like Ethereum is right now, um, it's a great, it's a great uh, blockchain. It's I love Ethereum, but let's let's be real, the fees are out of control, right? I mean, we've all kind of used Ethereum probably in the past few months, and you notice when you want to do some transactions, like it's very high, and maybe for some people it's not so bad. Like let's say, because like I was watching a, a podcast something with Mark Cuban. And he was talking about um, DeFi and stuff like that. So for a guy like Mark Cuban, where he's got we got like millions of dollars on DeFi and it costs him four hundred dollars for a transaction fee, he don't care because he's probably making that, uh, you know, double. He's probably it's making a fraction of a percent of his transaction. Yeah, he's probably making four thousand dollars a day, um, yielding yield farming versus um, you know somebody like me that's just trying to test out this stuff. And when I look at it, I go, well, if I if it costs me a couple hundred dollars for um, a transaction fee, that's basically, there goes all the money that I made yield farming um, for this transaction. Or, I went to play around with it actually like uh, maybe two or three weeks ago. And uh, to reimburse me for the transaction fee would have taken over two years in farming, yield farming, just to break even. You know? Yeah, so that's that's the big uh, uh, you know problem that I have with, with Ethereum right now. And, um, the, it, the issue that really comes down to is that, um, if, if we want to first, like anybody wants to do something like this, they want to learn how to use it. Right. It's, 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 it's not hard to do, but it just takes, you know, practice and using it and stuff like that. And, you know, obviously if you are using a lot of money or value, you don't want to risk a lot to initially start, right? You want to just kind of get your finger, you dip, you know, dip your fingers into it, dip your toes into it, kind of get an understanding how it works. And then at that point, maybe you could start putting more into it. And again, like we all say, I, I, I think it's like the wild west right now where um, there, you don't know what's going to happen. There could be a situation where there's a bug and there has been, right? Um it's still early, so they're still working all those bugs right, out. It's natural. It, yeah, it's early. It happened. I think the paid network recently too. I think that's uh, the most recent one I heard of. Yeah. Yeah, paid networks, and uh, you know, so so that's why for somebody like me, I don't want to put a lot of uh, capital up yield farming and risk something like that, where you know I don't want to lose um, a big percentage of my value to try to just get you know an interest rate, which, which is great. You know, if you can get in 14%, whatever they're at now, I mean, that's, that's awesome. But, um, I'm not, I'm not willing to risk it right now. Uh, you it know, keeps those small players out from benefiting too. that maybe want to do like 20 bucks a week, 50 bucks a week and start doing it and just right. keep doing it every week. It keeps them out from doing that, you know? Right. So, and that's, and that's kind of the hard part of what's going on, but what's good about this new network upgrade, which I think it's going to happen 
in July. Uh, let's see. So, so there's a couple of things about this and I didn't read this article, but I'm just showing like that, you know, this is going on. So a couple of things that are going on. All right. The first thing is, is now that you, um, are decreasing the fees, you're making that work more usable for more people. And that means it would bring more value to the network. And the second thing would be is now with this thing going on, um, they're supposed to burn the tokens or the, uh, so like the transaction fees, right? Uh, when you pay those transaction fees, which should go lower because if you increase the amount of transactions per second, it should be cheaper because then more transactions can happen on the network. Um, once, once you do that, the what you're going to have these things now with token burn so basically um ethereum which right now has no limit and that's kind of an issue and that's an issue for a lot of people including myself there's no limit right where bitcoin is 21 million other cryptocurrencies may have uh, a maximum uh supply um once they have this thing where you're going to start burning the tokens because instead of it going i think to the miners the um the tokens are going to burn now miners are obviously upset about this because that's some of their money but at the same rate ethereum is going to proof of stake where you're no longer going to be mining and you're just going to be running nodes so um sooner or later those those miners are basically going to be like uh, like you know like it doesn't even matter anymore yeah. yeah it doesn't matter like you're 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 yesterday's news and you're going you're going to be replaced at some point so um, you might as well just start the process of burning the uh, tokens, um, which will increase the price of the, you know, what's going out there because of everything that's locked up in DeFi, everything that's locked up in staking. And now you're starting to um, burn tokens, right? I mean, that's what happened with Binance, right? Binance token, besides- Lowering the supply, yeah. Yeah, Binance token was like a big thing about Binance was burning tokens. I'm looking at it now. I think it's like number three or four. I think it's three. So, Last time I looked, it was it flipped uh, Cardano and became yeah. three. Yeah, and uh, you know, I, I it's funny because I, I have I, I have like a little bit, but it's just funny because the only reason I had Binance token originally was when I was trading on Binance or buying stuff on Binance, it gave me discounts, and then um, you know I just saved some. But I remember it was like, I think it was like six dollars or or twenty like it was really cheap. And now it's what two fifty something like that, like approaching really? three hundred dollars. Yeah, Binance coin. Yeah, yeah Binance the dollars. Oh my gosh. It's, well, they're in the DeFi game now. So and yeah, they have that, that burning that, supply. You know? And they're offering ridiculous interest rates right now. Like um for like I seen something like twenty seven percent if you lock it up for like fifteen days. But a pancake swap. I, I don't know. I That's their DeFi platform on Binance. I remember chain. hearing it somewhere and I was like, What? Like I was like, I like to lock up my little bit of uh Binance. Yeah, Binance at two eighty two right now. Yeah, I mean, and they kind of like pulled a lot of the DeFi market away from Ethereum when they did all that stuff, right? Right, because so, the pricing too, right? That was another problem because when yeah, you, the Ethereum gas fees were like over four hundred gui, which, <laughs> which is uh, crazy considering you know uh, you know majority of last year you're talking under forty gui, so it's like a ten x in gas fees. Um, but also, as you know, as an Ethereum DeFi guy, it's been helpful for me because the GUI is back down to, to like uh, in the hundreds, um, and on the slow times of the day, it's down to like eighty or ninety. So, you just kind of pick your times, and I don't mind. I, I, I trust Ethereum more than I do Binance. Yeah. So let the market take their share, and uh, let the Ethereum DeFi uh, participants, you know. That's what it is. I mean, Ethereum is sitting firmly in second behind Bitcoin for a reason. Yep. And then these other projects are the ones coming up vying to be the next uh, one to be, compete on that level, you know? Oh, I just realized, yeah. Binance Coin is in the third spot. So. Yeah, that's what we were just talking about. Yeah, um, that's crazy. We got Cardano, Tether, and Polkadot behind that. Yeah, it's uh, Tether, Polkadot, Cardano. And then Cardano, and then Polkadot, and then I think Litecoin or something like that. Litecoin's at number nine. You have Uniswap at eight. Uniswap. And actually a uh, big thing with Uniswap, I don't know if it was Uniswap, but maybe it was something to do with you, like sushi or something like that. They went on Coinbase recently. Not for us because we're in New York. We're not special. Hmm. The law, the laws apply harder to us, but yeah. um, it's, it's just, like I said, it's, um, 
hey, you know, Ethereum definitely. Uh, and and another thing too about Ethereum where people don't understand like why it was also valuable. Like if we go, we maybe Jeff, you can go into some of those NFT things, right? Everything, all these NFTs are being built on the Ethereum network, right? That's a good way to segue into NFTs. I'll take it. I'll yeah, take the bait. So, so we'll, we'll uh, talk about this big one that sold today. Um, this is the one you wanted to see first, right? Beeple? Yeah, yeah. So yeah, you created this uh, piece of artwork, just an image for five thousand days in a row. Apparently, it wasn't a very successful, uh, financially successful anyway, artist before this. So this was huge for him too. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it was an image of five thousand days, an image a day, and it just sold at auction for sixty-nine million dollars. Show the image too, because it actually mm -hmm. looked pretty cool. And I was looking at it too; it's like a high-quality uh, JPEG. It's like a over hundred megabytes and stuff like that. Where if you look at it and zoom in. It's got like pictures and pictures and like all different types of cool stuff. Maybe you can find a better, um, you know, picture of it that you can. I don't know if I could zoom in from here. Quality picture, but you know, sixty-nine million dollars for NFT. And if anybody doesn't know, it's a non-fungible token. And if correct me if I'm wrong, but basically, it's um, some sort of artwork that's built on the Ethereum blockchain that is unique, has a unique identifier, it can't really be copied. I mean, you could technically copy it by like literally copying that image and whatever but there's never going to be an identical version of what the one that is issued you yeah. copy the artwork it's just right. you assign ownership it's proof of ownership exactly yeah so but it but it's not that it even gives you any royalties or anything like that it's just it's not just in this of, case it's just it just becomes a collectible signature kind of thing you know so um it's a collectible. That's that's really what they're becoming. You know? I think it's important to be clear, though, that that's what this one is. But now that we're seeing music getting released as far as NFTs goes and stuff, you, I think I think you're going to start seeing royalties applying to it and things like that. I haven't seen anything like that. The, like the Kings of the Kings of Leon thing yes, came out right. with the NFT, but that was just giving you special additional artwork. Or you know, if you have the NFT and you go to a concert, they'll give you VIP access or some extra thing. That's what I mean. That's how it exists yeah. today. But I could see it evolving more into ownership. Like if they're playing a song you bought as an NFT on Spotify and you own it, maybe you get fifty percent and the original artist gets fifty percent or something along those lines. I mean, if that is rolling out, that would be great. I mean, I know, you know, the musicians, I was talking to one earlier this week because, uh, you know, it's always in the back of their minds. They're they're getting killed financially right now with uh, the ability to just, you know, copy music or just get it for a dollar yeah, on yeah. Apple. Streaming. Um, they're completely left out in the dark. So, so if there's something like that that could help them. That would be great. I uh, just want to talk about this one thing because um, you were talking about the Kings of Leon and actually I have it um, just real quick. Let me just pull this up. Oh, all right. Um, so they actually, what they did was they had an auction for um, I think an album, but also part of the auction was you get a lifetime concert passes. So <laughs> Let's just say you own this thing, this whatever, this NFT. You can go to any concert, I guess, for free as a part of this thing. And if you wanted to sell that to somebody, somebody like so let's say somebody's like a bigger fan of that group, um, they could buy that and literally have lifetime concert tickets to see them. And so it's 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 actually not a bad idea. I mean, imagine buying lifetime concert tickets to any like to go see a band whenever you felt like it. That's a and big band too. Yeah. You know, that's I, I, no, not they're not my favorite group, but you know, like, popular. I could, I could imagine like this is definitely a way to go, and and also, you know, even um, having like a, an album, right? How many times you buy like an album on a CD or something like that, and like the CD gets ruined, obviously, or you. You lose the file, the file gets damaged or something like that. Like if you had the NFT, you could probably just, no matter what, you always have, um, as long as you have, I guess, your private keys, you always have access to your album. It's it's just an interesting uh, route that they're going with this. You know what I mean? Just again, it's just like DeFi, just getting started. It's Well, it's, you're, you're seeing the start of the tokenization of the tokenization economy, right? Like eventually the future it will be that all real estate is tokenized and all companies instead of stocks you're going to have 
uh, tokenized companies where people buy the tokens from that. So it's you're just seeing it all start to evolve, which is pretty neat. I know um, there's an artist I like, Ill Bill from New York. He's a rapper. And he just sold a song as an NFT called Silk Road, actually. Um, and part of the deal with that, they got some other perks too, Matt, like you were referencing um, the concert tickets. I forget what else was involved, maybe some artwork. But um, however, that smart contract, I suppose, is written, that any time that, that token is resold, that Silk Road song is resold, Ill Bill will get 10% of that sale price. Yeah, he's getting royalties. So you can count that as royalties. So that makes me think that that'll continue to evolve, too, in the more complex kind of uh, systems well, to be able to distribute also, that, you know? That's also happening with some of these artists, right? They're doing the same thing. They're selling it. And, like, let's just say for any reason we decide to make an NFT and somebody wants it i we can literally uh set it up so every time it's sold we get like one percent of that value sold so if it's sold for you know a hundred dollars you get a dollar every time that it's sold we should aim a little higher than that Matt. we want to make quality nfts listen i the (laughs) fact that i mean it probably costs more money to make an nft just because the ethereum fees and that's kind of what makes it so hard right now for the little guy like to play around with this stuff is good point you know, if you want to make one, you got to actually pay money to make one. You got to pay to play. You know? Well, this was another piece of NFT news that uh, came out today. I showed you guys earlier this crypto punk sold today. Yeah. March 11th, 311 day, by the way. Happy 311 day. So I thought it would be cool to explore the crypto punks website and watch the, uh, you can see the journey that this punk has gone on. But yeah, this sold today for 4,200 Ethereum valued at $7.56 million. God bless them. And if anyone's looking at the screen, that's it. <laughs> that's it. Actually, I don't even I don't even know if this is the one. Uh, well, let's that, find out. What was that's the one right there? Looks just seven. That's that looks like it's it. We can find the one. So I'll show you guys on the crypto. So if you can go to larvalabs.com slash crypto punks, this is a platform that created these crypto punks. And originally they were released for free, as best as I understand. But one of the first NFTs that came out in 2017. So I thought it would be cool to all punk types and attributes. The one that was sold was an alien. Nine of them ever made. No, that's why it's so valuable. Average sale price is 3000 Ethereum. Mm. Jesus. So we could take a look at all these right now. These are all nine of these punks. And you could see, yeah, the one we just saw. That wasn't even the one from today. Same sale yeah. price though. Even three so years two ago. in a row just sold for that much. But look at the ones that were sold for three years ago, and they've got, got four. Well, that's what I'm going to show you right now. See, so let's let's just do the one from today. The most recent sale of this alien. It's wearing a headband that is as an accessory. So aliens are super rare, and single attribute punks are also super rare. So you can see the entire transaction history here. It was claimed, it seems to me, for free by Straybit. And then it was, I guess it just sat there. Man, imagine buying it. was a bunch of bids made and withdrawn. And then it was sold in July of 2017 for eight yeah, Ethereum, okay. which was $2,127 at the People time. You would probably be crazy spending $2,000 on that back then. Back then, eight yeah. Ethereum. But, when... So that was 2017. Here we are, what, three and a half years later? Yeah. And it sat in that wallet ever since. And now it's sold for 4,200 4, Ethereum or approximately $8 million. So 2,000 to 8 million in, in three and a half years. Yep, nobody gives a crap about their dollars anymore. That's for sure. Yeah. And I guess, I guess we could literally go right into uh, that part. Or they're just money laundering with these crypto punks. Uh, Put any so, bad ideas on anyone's head. Let's so, see who it went to. Let's just see where this thing landed. Yeah, this address only owns one punk. Anyway. You can own a lot more for that. Probably Probably the same freaking two guys just trading them all back and forth. (laughs) They do say that there, people are saying there might be at some point money laundering involved with this stuff. Yeah, don't think like this is like some crazy market where there's a whole crap load of people buying these things. It could literally just be a handful of people. Yeah. yeah, it wouldn't surprise me if this really just collapses out from under itself, but it's wild to see right now. It's, it's you know, it's just very reminiscent of uh, the 2017 ICO craze. Yeah. Um, just, you know, as someone who lived through the ICO craze, uh, it's, it just seems like the same thing. 
I feel like they're 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 a little bit better than ICOs in the sense it's actually like something, you know. <laughs> it's something. Something it's, like sometimes the ICOs, the ICOs were nothing. Well, this that's is true. a token that's going to do this better and that better than Bitcoin. Well, the ICOs had websites, so those yeah. were pretty cool. And fake white papers. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and that's the cool. value. You can go read the white paper and, and throw your time away too. It showed a team of like actors because <laughs> they were literally like Jude. I remember one was like a. A picture of like Jude Law. It'd be like Shutterfly <laughs> across it. Like. Yeah. This one's but, yeah. a solid team. Jude just Law. Do your, just do your research, people. That's all. You know, that's that's the thing. Uh, well, I figured I'd pull this stuff up because it's kind of related to NFTs. And I'm, I didn't know this until recently. So Polygon is apparently Matic, which we've heard about for a couple of years, is one of the Binance IEOs. But their name is Polygon now, although this ticker is still Matic. Isn't Polygon not old? I was old. Like I, I felt like Polygon was around for a while. Yeah, but like, I don't know. Maybe it was a different Polygon. But you see here the ticker Matic. Okay, this is Poly the same Matic, okay. but now it's called Polygon. I don't know if they combined with another project. I'm not sure what happened. Yeah, they changed their name and look at the price go sky high. Isn't that crazy? No, it's just that. But yeah, so they're getting um, into scalability and dealing with NFTs. I noticed this news came out today which I thought was potentially relevant because I know that's that one. Matic recently has been on a tear. This is the one day chart. That's against Bitcoin, USD, okay. same thing. So I don't know if this is just because the alts have been getting a lot of attention, but it's got to be at least, in my opinion, it's got to be at least something about maybe the, the uh, what do they call themselves now? Poly Polygon. Polygon. Holly want a cracker. Whatever happened with the Polygon name and then getting into NFTs, it wouldn't surprise me at all if that affected the price like that. Maybe. Definitely could be. I mean, like, it's just, it's just, you know what it is, is like there's some oil coins that come out and I just don't care too much for them because I've seen so many uh, well, newer oil coins or whatever that come out and it's just, bur you know, it burns people. Yeah, yeah, I know what you mean. Like, it wouldn't so have surprised I, me if this trend just continued down and stayed down forever. Yeah. Because so like most said, of them do that. I, and, and that's that's the thing, like, why I always tell, you know, I'm, I'm sure everybody else here is agreement, you know, Bitcoin first. Everything else is just... A know. distraction. Yeah, I mean, don't get me wrong. Like, or there gambling. are some things that have other purposes and causes, and, it, you know, it could be something, but, you know... Mm -hmm. The test of time, uh, if you want to look into that, that's, that's always Bitcoin. And even, you know, I tell everybody, like, you know, they keep buying all these alts and stuff. They have zero Bitcoin. And then Bitcoin just starts doing what Bitcoin does. And you look at their Bitcoin to um, whatever chart and Bitcoin is just totally, you know, dominating all these yeah. altcoins. So that's why, you know, like. There's a lot of money coming into this space fast. So, yeah. um you know, the, uh, these are the types of things you see not at the bottom of a cycle, but kind of towards towards the top, you know, because people are going to start trying to um, get you to sell your coins and, and buy weird stuff. That's uh, what the dips are right now. Yeah. Mostly. You know, and I see it with, uh, you know, friends of mine who are newer and just getting in in 2020 or even 2021. And, you know, you buy a little bit and they're just looking they're looking to make those big gains quick so they get sucked into these things. Yeah, because they're like, oh, um, why would I buy Bitcoin at $57,000 when I can buy S coin for $1? Right. I could buy Dogecoin for seven cents. And $1, exactly. this coin has potential to go up 10x, where Bitcoin only has the potential to go to 3x. And I was like, yeah, yeah it's maybe. The same story. But it's the same story. And, uh, you know, Bitcoin is compounding 200 percent a year yep <laughs> every year so best uh, best asset of since it's been born basically than anything so 200 percent a year compounded uh i mean how much more do you want <laughs> you get much better than that <laughs> like for real like I, and i just it just drives me crazy when people are buying all this other crap and i'm like right just have a little bit of bitcoin I mean, hey, you know what? If you bought Matic over here, you'd yeah, be happy, right? Of course. of course, but that's the thing. I'm like, and maybe Matic will be the greatest thing ever. But my 
history and um, every other crypto that's come out probably says no. Well, I mean, I, t I totally agree with your point. I'm just kind of busting your chops here. But that actually just kind of speaks to the point of that. We were just saying that the uh, NFT thing could collapse right out from under. That whole market could collapse. And I think that's really what we're seeing with Matic right now, too, is just that NFT mania. People saw that headline of NFT and they just piled into Matic all at once. Right. It has potential. That's all you got you to gotta say. It has potential. Look at Matic compared to Bitcoin, though. That's what it is. It's doing good. He was just showing No, it's that. not. Yeah, it is. <laughs> really? Yeah. Oh. Look at, you see the screen? Matic Network. Oh, I'm looking at a different chart. My bad. Oh, it's right there. Polygon now or whatever. I was looking at Metacoin. I don't know what the heck that is, but no, Mat Matic just like crushed past its all-time high against Bitcoin. Got it. It's brand new though, right? How old is it? No, it's a little older. Couple of years, right? May 2019. Oh, that was okay. one of those uh, when Binance had the uh, initial exchange offering craze going on. And Matic was one of those projects. Yeah. Sure. I don't know. That's that's not on my. It's not. On, I mean, I think it may be on like uh, my block folio as like a coin to watch, but I have zero matic. I'm, oh, I don't hold any matic either. I'm not interested in it. I just I thought uh, it kind of tied into the NFT news, and I figured it was a good way to segue into the charts. Yeah. Does anybody know what matic does? Automatic, semi-automatic. <laughs> well, it's polygon now. Let's just oh. say no for right now. <laughs> okay. it's probably a proof of stake coin, just like you know, like a. Number 49. Smart contracts and yada, yada, yada. Uh, Ethereum killer. You know? We'll see. Same stuff that we've been hearing forever. We'll uh, see. If anything. Oh, is it a layer that. one? It's what? Is it, is it a layer one, like Ethereum or yeah. Cardano? Uh, it's like one of those? Yeah. It's, it's, you build on it? I mean, it's up 27% today, which is pretty crazy. Whatever. <laughs> Basically, whatever. Yeah, Polygon backed by Coinbase and Binance. I mean, that's probably more the news that people were noticing. I think that actually came to uses layer two that. secure changes and side chains to create scaling solutions for Ethereum blockchain. Does that answer your question, Greg? Layer what? Yeah. Polygon backed by Coinbase and Binance. Yeah, they were just put on it. I think they were. You're able to buy it on Coinbase if you're not from New York. Finally, or yeah, Iran. You can still buy it. North Korea. You can still buy it, but not New York State. New York, no way. Atlanta. USS New York. Yeah, pretty much. Um, I was going to say, if we're going to go into some things about money because Greg was just talking about how, uh, you know, people just want to waste their dollars or spend their dollars or get rid of their dollars. You got a few charts on that, Greg, or you want me to pull them up? Um, I mean, what? Do we want to talk about the uh, $1.9 trillion yeah, that's, that's that got signed today? Way. That I'm gonna say is, uh, you know, before we go into charts, I said we save that stuff for the end, but you know, 1.9 trillion, everybody. Yeah. Ha happy STEMI day. Biden just signed it today, so uh, I mean, everybody that makes us under a certain amount is getting fourteen hundred dollars. So uh, put it all in the Bitcoin. Yeah. If Not financial advice. Yeah. <laughs> but you're getting it. But seriously, if you do. Oh, Oh, I, I think because, Greg, you said this chart made you uh, feel queasy before. So I guess you were looking at this is what happened last time. Yeah. It's about to happen again. Right. Yeah. So we're going to end up. In all a short, you know, this is all within a year amount of time. So you could see how much money has been added to the supply uh, within a year. And each one of those little green marks on the screen there represents a month. Um, yeah. and you could, you could follow this chart all the way back to the seventies. And I mean, it's been scary enough, the growth of it over the last 10 years from the financial collapse, uh, in 2008. Um, and now with the COVID action, yeah. if you take the COVID out, that's what it looked like before. Yeah. It's kind of like a knife in the heart of the dollar. That's the way it goes through processes through my brain. And, uh, yeah, it makes me a little, uh, fr a little freaked out. Because visually, you could see the death, the, the death of the dollar right in front of your eyes. That's it. Um, so it's kind of tough, um, you know, being like a Bitcoin maximalist. Um, you're not so much connected to the dollar value that that you're getting here. I mean, a lot of people get excited; they enter the space and they they expect to get rich with dollar signs. And um, personally, it's just what? Who cares about the dollar signs? 
because yeah. you're going to end up with millions of dollars, but they're not going to be able to buy anything. So yeah, that's just the metric we use kind of in the short term to measure against. Exactly. But the closest uh, thing we have. I'm not saying I'm right about that. I mean, maybe millions of dollars will still be something. I mean, uh, I'm sure it'll still have some value, but in the reality of, with inflation, it's just not going to be the same. I guess at the end of the day, it's all, it's really just becoming about how many Satoshis you're going to have and how many Bitcoin you have, you know? So is that's going to be the new metric that I see everything going to be pegged against, um, you know, especially for big purchases or international trade. Uh, we see Bitcoin becoming the global settlement layer instead of the dollar, which, you know, currently it's the dollar. 80% of all international trade is settled in the dollar. Um, and I think that that's coming to an end um, sooner than later. Yeah. I mean, you can see it already with a lot of countries that are basically starting to mine Bitcoin, use Bitcoin. Right. And that have uh, sanctions against them from this country it's like well if you're gonna do that we're just gonna use a more sound. also don't forget about chinese china already has a digital currency out there in the world which gives the people or, or nation states or corporations at least another option so it's not just bitcoin but i mean so my point there is just that it's not only bitcoin threatening the u.s dollar there's going to be a competition yeah. of currencies we see too you know yeah right. most of china's them. got a head start but uh, China, the China dollar is still just a centrally controlled shit currency. Yeah, so. exactly. You it know, is. That's the first iteration. Can, you know, yeah. I'm, I'm not saying that would be the ideal choice. I'm not concerned about people China's would currency, choose, but nor nor would I ever want to use their currency ever, ever. No, but I understand the sentiment there. Um, you know, Russia and China, they they want to do deals with each other, and regardless of the dollar, so they have options to do so now. Um, right. You think know. about how many markets China could get into too by offering services because they could just digitally bring their currency in. Yeah. And the U.S. can't do that right now. But the China, China could just come into people in other areas of the world that don't want to use the dollar but have no choice. And it gives them a choice at least. The U.S. is working on that. And, and uh, I know um, I know they're working on it, but China's got a head start. It's not a good thing for the, for the dollar. And actually, maybe we'll get right into this part about um, the U.S. because... Uh, We'll go on to this part. I mean, this was like, a, I guess, 10 days ago. Or You're Trying to share your screen? Yeah. You should. Is it strong? There you go. So um, right here, uh, the Federal Reserve basically went down. And what, what the best part about it was Janet Yellen uh, had said something where Bitcoin is inefficient. And well, there was something else that she said. I don't know if you guys remember. Like, this is a while ago. But uh it's kind of ironic where, you know, you're going to sit there and, and, and say that the um, that Bitcoin is not useful and it's inefficient when you literally your whole system went down. Yeah. So, you know, yeah, that was uh, that was a funny day. It, it's just <laughs> it's just crazy that that's, you know, that went on. And, you know, there's even more stuff here. Like I put left an article where the lawmakers are. uh giving tax incentive for people that are mining in uh, Kentucky. So th this is all like this, what was we say, this snowball effect that's, um, you know, coming downhill. You got Square right here, uh, recently doubled down uh, on their purchase as well as micro uh, strategy to buying more Bitcoin, adding to their reserve, uh, treasury reserves, because it's not really good to hold um, dollars, right? It's not. It's not. It's not safe for them to do that. Not for the long term, that's for sure. No. So um, it's going to be uh, an interesting year. It already has been. I mean, it's March right now. Two months have gone by, and uh, it just seems like, even though I'm not surprised, and you guys probably are not, but the um, outside. Uh, of the cryptocurrency um, people group or whatever are definitely being surprised at this because even JP Morgan recently just announced some sort of um, ETF that they have where it's you could buy uh, groups that are not necessarily Bitcoin but they are indirectly or directly associated with Bitcoin like so some of that was like MicroStrategy, Square, Riot Blockchain. Um, I think Marathon was on that, maybe a couple other groups, PayPal. And 
these are these are becoming real um like it this is just becoming real for real like this is it this is this is you know something that we've been talking about for a while and now it's really starting it just happened it's starting to happen and it's just crazy because you're seeing like this this next wave of companies corporations institutions uh, at some point, you know, you're seeing banks and then you'll see central banks and governments. And then that's where, you know, you've literally hit that, that, you know, crazy, those crazy values that people are talking about, those million dollar Bitcoin that everyone's like, oh, that's not possible. And it's like, well, if, you, far look away. At, if you look at what's going on and, and, and where things are going, that's where it's going. So right. before you go and start buying these crap coins and putting all your money into something that you know, has no use case because you're literally like thinking like, Oh, I'm going to make dollars. Like I'm going to make a nice gain in dollars. And it's like, but right. in the long run, what are you getting out of it? Just you're look at what the, it. we'll look at what the big boys are buying, you know, right. that's Elon amazing. Musk. Yeah. And Michael that's Taylor. And nobody's buying anything else but Bitcoin. So they're not buying XRP. They're not buying. Fuck. I mean, they are, they did some, one group did buy Ethereum. It was like a, Chinese company, um, they bought Bitcoin and Ethereum. Yeah, there's, there's a few outliers, but it's, I mean, 95 plus percent of it's Bitcoin. Right. But it's, yeah, because it's solving the biggest problem that we all have right now. And that's what do we do with the, money. the, the savings that we have? What do we, that's the biggest problem that everyone has. Um, if you're fortunate enough to even have any savings, because you know, I would say at least half or majority don't even have anything to save. Yeah, that's, that's um, those statistics are ugly. That's true. Yeah, it's it's terrible. But for those that have savings, and you know, you would you would think that those with savings are the ones that are able to provide new opportunities for those without it. They have to preserve it before it gets stolen by the governments and the central bankers. So. Um, you know, you should be rooting for these guys to, to adopt this technology because it could save the capital. Right, you're protecting for the, your wealth. For the good guys, for the good guys who provide jobs and provide products and provide services and keep things going around. Um, government doesn't actually produce or create anything. Or well, not even just the, the good guys or people that have all that wealth, but also people that may not have it and are looking to put themselves into something that can preserve that because, you know, for somebody that maybe are is not doing as well financially, um, maybe this is a way out for them to actually preserve what they're saving and put it in and grow their 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 wealth. You know where maybe they wouldn't have had that before because there wasn't really anything worth putting their money into. I was just thinking the same thing that I've, I've thought in the past when like money was really tight when I was younger and stuff. Like, what's the point of saving twenty bucks a week? Why bother? Right. Yeah. But if well, you put it in Bitcoin all year, that would actually pay off. Yeah, because now all of a sudden that twenty dollars a week, you know, it accumulates, and then down the road you're looking at, you know, let's say ten x's, you know, that's two hundred percent compounded every year. Yeah. Two hundred percent compounded every year. There's the number. And then, that's, and then that's over time, deal. you know, that makes it worth saving. Yeah, yeah right. so, you know, they have uh, enough money maybe to buy a house in five or ten years, where they would have had probably no money to buy anything. And then right, it's Bitcoin is the first constant in economics. All economics is all economics before Bitcoin is theory. It's all theoretical. There was never a constant. So now that we have a constant, we can actually prepare for the future. You know, uh, for, for I what? think that's the best brief explanation I've ever heard of Bitcoin, Greg. Well done. Yeah, it's the uh, only constant in economics. It's the, it's the first constant in economics. Um, we know all the we. It's the only variable that we know. And you know, as an engineer or mathematician, you you need the constant to, to have the equation yeah. figured out. So well put, uh, man. I like that. That's quotable. That could be our first NFT maybe. And well, the thing about that too, I think I got that from Michael Saylor, by the way, micro strategy. Um, I mean, I listen to every single thing that guy um, say, stuff. has, he does has make some good philosophical there. points. Yeah. Cool. Um, yeah. Yeah. He knows what he's talking about. So, um, I mean, you know, as, as a, as a guy who's has a growing family and things like that, I mean, you need, I need something to be able to um, prepare and, and have good predictions for, for what, what the future holds. And Bitcoin's the best bet for that. Yeah. Well, I was going to say with the, um, going back to that, right. 
if you want to care, compare uh, Bitcoin, let's say to gold, right? Because gold was like the less or sound money that was used by, you know, our civilization, right? And, and when everybody was using that and treating it properly and stuff like that and not debasing it, it was actually things were thriving. And if you look at where you want to compare that to Bitcoin, right? So the only thing, as you said, constant, right? Bitcoin is constant. It's a constant. Gold, yeah. gold is not because gold, you could find a mountain full of gold. And let's just say the price of gold is worth whatever. And the more the price of gold goes up, the more that you might want to search for more gold and, you know, try to increase your, your current holdings or supply of that. But increasing the supply then also decreases the value, right? right? But as for Bitcoin, no matter how high the price goes, there's only at this point in time, 900 Bitcoins per day issued. It doesn't matter how many people are trying to mine it. The whole world can mine it. They could put every single piece of energy into mining Bitcoin. There's still going to be the same amount that comes out. Yeah. Or they could whittle it down to, to a couple of computers right. <laughs> mining it. <laughs> and it's, it's going to be 900 a day versus gold. If you want to go crazy, they'll go crazy. And they'll, that stock to flow ratio is going to go out of the, you know, through the roof because yeah, there's no constant there. Right. That and that's the like, how much gold exists? How many pounds of gold exist or kilos or whatever? You don't know. You don't know. Nobody knows. Nobody we'll search knows. The ocean. I mean, and then that. never mind like the uh, paper gold, so to speak, that's traded that doesn't. It's not backed by anything. Yeah, for exactly. Yeah, that's that's why economics has all been theory until the big yeah. coin era. And uh, yeah, you you study economics, you realize that there's all these different schools of thought. You know, we just happen to be living in a government that accepts the Keynesian model of economics. Yeah. Um, most arm. of us Bitcoiners, we, we're students of the Austrian school of economics. So anyone out there, you know, you might want to uh, just understand that there's different schools of thought and uh, could compare the ones. And it, it usually forms with your specific ideology. Um, but for me, Austrian school of economics is always yeah. uh, rung the bell as far as what is the best uh for a sound economy. Yeah. Isn't that what the Mises Institute teaches, yeah. Austrian economics? Mises and Roths. Uh, uh, my, yeah, my M I S E S, Mises. Yes. Yep. And that's why it's also we Mises. I keep, Mises, I keep excuse me. About, um, you know, read the Bitcoin standard if you haven't, if you're, you know, you want to look into this stuff, it really goes into depth about some of these things. So definitely worth uh, looking into. Um, I don't know if you guys have any other new stuff or maybe you want to go into charts. What do you guys want to do? I worked through everything I had. So what do you guys got? Charts? Let's go on a bit. Um, you want to take a look at the charts? You got yeah, anything right. to share? Yeah. I mean, sure, yeah. What are you looking at, Greg? Um, let's go. We will do... We'll go check out the, uh, the Bitcoin chart here. You know, I keep everything uh, in the Bitcoin chart here. We could look starting back at the monthly, the BLX chart. I'm going to take off all my indicators here. But anytime you're looking at the Bitcoin chart, especially in the long term view, you want to make sure you look at it logarithmically because um, that shows the nice trend up. I mean, that's why they call it number go up technology compared to if you look at it with log off to a uh, you know, this is how it looks off and it looks kind of uh, crazy this way. Yeah. Um, and anybody on Wall Street, if they're looking at this, they'll say this is a completely emotional buy. Yeah, it's a bubble. Um, when you look at it non-log. So basically when it's non-log, the chart's just showing you um, the price action. But when it's logarithmically, it shows you price action based on a percentage of the move, um, which is a truer account. So, I mean, this is looking super healthy, right? Um, if we turn on some indicators here, Ichimoku Cloud, um, let's go down to a weekly chart. So you can see the cloud is, is bullish. We have the slow, the fast over the slow moving averages trending up. We have the, the lagging span trending up. Everything's in full bull, bull mode on the weekly chart. Nothing of That's concern weekly? here. This is a weekly chart, yeah. Okay. Even a six days looking nice. Daily chart, I mean, this is, again, very clean. 
nice steady uptrend um, bouncing off these these moving averages known as the Tekken and Kijun lines. Um, you're just looking for price to retrace back to at least the Tekken line, the, the, the Kijun line, which is the slower moving average, which we hit on uh, February 28th. And, you know, you see that that candle right here, this nice little bounce of the key that's June. Perfect. Yeah, that's exactly what you want to see. Yeah. Um, what do they call it a hammer? Uh, uh, that would be like a rising star. Okay. Um, but it did close bearish, but still it's got that nice long wick at the bottom, which shows buyers, buyers there. Um, and let's go, I like to follow the Binance USD because that seems to be the most popular um, action here. Um, what else did we get? Oh, down here in the MACD, we had uh, another MACD cross above the zero line, um, which you could see back here, we did it um, around 18,000. And then that led us all the way up to you know, 40,000 and we were traced back. Again, we got another MACD cross above the zero line, which is key. Um, that shows, you know, it's much more bullish if you have that uh, cross above the zero line, which happened around uh, 33K. And that took us all the way up to 58K. We're traced back down and now we have another cross above the zero line. So that's like a really bullish indicator that could send us back to the gates of Valhalla probably around. I thought you had a question, Matt, but you're just pointing no, up. No, I'm going to go up. No, I'm going to go up. <laughs> yeah. So this is looking like super healthy. It's, it's a really easy chart to be looking at here. Um, if I was a no coiner, um, I'd be looking to buy in at these moving averages. Um, so you could set buy orders around 51,000 and 44,000, those seems to be the safe spots to put some juicy buy orders on. Um, going down a little bit, I'll go down to the four hour chart just to show you where we're at. Um, just us guys discussing on the side, you know, I was really excited to finally get this, um, this Kumo twist, this cloud twist from bearish cloud to bull cloud. Which candle um, did that happen on? So the cloud is 30 units ahead of time, right? So this would have happened and it's going to turn on all my indicators, but. Sorry, you need to throw a wrench in the works okay. here. This happened. So 30 bars previous. That happened on March 9th at, what is that? Three o'clock. So that was two days ago. And it's done. Got it. it looks like it had a little bounce after that, but it's been going up since. Yeah. Okay. Um, so the twist played out as expected. Yeah. So the you know the four you know you have the the four indicators you're looking for on the on the in Ichimoku cloud. You want a bull cloud. You want the TK cross taken over the Kijun, which happened back here. You want the lagging span above the cloud, and you want the price above the cloud. So. This just so happened to be the last one that we needed was the bullish Kumo twist. Um, and then again, I mean, if you wanted to, you could put buy orders down here at uh, 54,000 and 52,000. Um, if you're looking to just add to your position, if you are already holding coins and you want to put some more fiat in there, that's where I would put my buy orders at. Um, but we are right now currently, you know, we're trying to pierce that previous all time high of around 58,400 or so. Um, which, once we get that, then again, Gates of Valhalla. And based on previous action, we could do uh, like a fib, a fib extension. Is that a shift pitchfork that said? <laughs> Peter Schiff? <laughs> yeah, the pitchforks are a good tool too. Um, but just to estimate where we will go after we cross this all-time high in the next few days, it looks like we could just use a fib retracement tool, and we could look at like the one, the one ratio, which is showing seventy-two thousand five hundred. That looks like a good target for the next leg up. 
Next local top or whatever. Next local top. Yeah, before we probably come back and re retest, yeah. you know, 60K or so. That's just... um, and that's kind of like, that's kind of what I'm looking at. Right? Everything looks really calm. And that's kind of why I've, uh, I haven't been too crazy about everything because everything's just so healthy looking. Even looking at the Ranko bar chart, which I like to do just to add confluence to what I'm looking at. Um, I have the Bollinger Bands and then a 12 and 26 moving average averages. And again, each Ranko bar is 1% of the asset. So right now I have it at 500. We could actually change that to like 550. And yeah, you want, so right here we had the cross of the fast moving average over the slow moving average. And that would have been an entry. You could have got stopped out right here, but then re-entered right here and rode this all the way up, you know, for a nice, uh, 8% gain in two days if you wanted to. And then we would be back in right now, right here. How was this calculated again? So a Ranko bar chart, it removes time from the equation, which is nice because now you're just worried. It's strictly price action, right? So what is the left to right I'm looking at here if it's not time? Price, like value. So uh, if you notice, I have it on the one minute. Yeah. So basically the price just has to be within that range, close within that range in a minute. So right now you could see it's coming down this red, this red bar, it hasn't closed yet. So I have it set at 550. Each box size is 550. Okay. Is approximately, I, and this is all $550. Whatever, $550. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And I set this manually up. So just from my experience, I like to keep it at 1% of the asset. And you could change this however you want. This is kind so of so the like, box represents a range around the current price of five hundred and fifty dollars in this case. Each box represents five hundred fifty bucks right now. That's it. So every time the price moves five hundred fifty dollars and it closes within a within a minute, it'll print that box. Does that make sense? So it doesn't print a box every minute. It only prints a box when it meets the criteria of the 1% move. Exactly. Okay. Which is powerful, right? Because- So it's only yeah. showing you the moves really. It's just showing you the price move. And that's what- Significant ones. Okay. And that's, that's why when you, you know, you could zoom out and it just, you don't care because you're not- That's why I got that. confused where it takes time out of it, but I'm looking at the one minute. Yeah. I, I understand now. I understand. So I could change it to a day. And that even makes it even cleaner. <laughs> However, during that day, if it makes big swings, you'll see a whole bunch of red bars. Right. So they, they won't close yet. So if you're like actively kind of trading or looking for where you're going, I found in my research that it's best to just put it on a one minute chart, set each box to 1% of the asset um, and base it on there. But again, I just use this to add confluence to what I'm looking at in my Ichimoku cloud. Um, and this is keeping me healthy. So like if I was back here and I saw, all right, fast moving average cross below the slow moving average, um, expect down some downtime. Which we <laughs> got know? clearly. I, and, and again, I, I'm not even an active trader. I just like to use the charts just to emotionally prepare myself for drops when they come. Um, I find that's just to be kind of helpful and therapeutic to, to be prepared rather than just watching this thing move up and down thousands of dollars. Um, and again, back at the cloud, it's just, it's the same idea. Um, right now I know like I could sleep sound cause we're, we're good. And even if we came back down to 48,000 or even 40,000, like I'm still comfortable. Like this is not changing the tune of anything, right? Um, because this is a long-term hold. And again, any anything you guys buy out there, as far as Bitcoin's concerned, you should have a four-year time horizon. At least. Okay. 
Um, if we want to get a little juicier, we could look at Ethereum Bitcoin. I usually track this um, regularly because uh, I have an Ethereum position. Uh, I, I'm interested in DeFi. I, I think it's a cool space. So I like to see how it's playing against uh, Bitcoin. Um, Looking at the famous weekly chart, which got me into my initial Bitcoin position last July around here, uh, we entered the cloud and I'm looking for an edge to edge trade with my Ethereum. So when you enter the cloud and you close strong, you usually hit the opposite edge of the cloud. So we're still inside the cloud. So my trade thesis is still alive. That cloud also flipped bullish, it looks like too, right? Exactly. So okay. we have the bullish cloud. We have the TK cross, which happened again back in July. The lagging span is in the cloud and the price is in the cloud. So we're, we're two out of four on the weekly. Okay. So it's still a very neutral position. We're not bear. We're not bull. It seems to kind of be just riding along with Bitcoin's uh, price movement up. That's what this is telling me. Um, consolidating down. Let's take a look at the daily. So the daily is a little different story here. Um, you could see we still have a bullish cloud, but we've lost the TK cross has gone bearish and the price is bearish because it's below the cloud and the lagging span is, is hanging on there. It's still above, um, but I wouldn't even count this because we're not actually above the cloud. So we're really only uh, one out of four on the daily switch. You know, if you're, you're better off being in Bitcoin rather than Ethereum. That's what it tells me. And I know a lot of the newbies who get into the space that they want to buy Ethereum because they see a $1,800 price. And I've seen a lot of chatter talking about it's going to 10 K and 20 K. And uh, I don't know why people say that. I mean, you know why people say 20 K like, what are you, what are you, what if, are you guys... if you look back to the Bitcoin chart from like almost exactly four years ago, it looks very similar to the Ethereum chart today with similar price points. Is that what they're, is that which what is they ba mean? Which basically there? means nothing. It means know? nothing. It's, it's, it's supply too. But that's, that is where the 20 K number is coming from. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It means nothing. I mean, you know, it's, this is just telling me that you're better off holding your Bitcoin because that's going to make the, the greater return for you. Can you check real quick if it's not too difficult, the price of Ethereum and USD today? Versus Bitcoin four years ago to the day. Um, Let's see how that's measuring up that metric. Just put the two USD charts up. Well, this is Ethereum US dollar. So what, what do you want? At? What do you want to look 18, at? Eighteen thirteen. What was yeah. the price of Bitcoin exactly four years ago today? Yeah. Four years ago today. A Bitcoin though, not Ethereum. Oh, okay. So I have two separate ones up. Yeah. So March 11th of 2017. March 11th, 2017. Let's go take a look. Sorry, I'm making you dig here. Uh, damn, this chart doesn't even go back to that. Binance wasn't even around <laughs> four years ago. <laughs> Ancient history. Uh, March 11th of 17. March 11th, 17. Let's zoom in, guys. Very exciting. Oh, yeah, right now it was 1813. Jeez. Uh, okay, a thousand bucks, right? Um, it looks like eleven seventy five. Yeah. Okay, eleven seventy five. Now you want to look at a th Ethereum. Ethereum well, today. Five to now seven to the I guess the top right uh, back in twenty uh, seventeen. Oh, you want to see Ethereum at that date? No. The comparison I'm talking about is kind of just saying that Ethereum is actually just exactly four yeah. years behind Bitcoin. You know what oh, I mean? Oh, I see. Yeah, so 11.75. So we're actually less than where we were. But in the ballpark area of where Ethereum is, you know, that, yeah. that's that's where the comparison is coming from, anyway. I got you. Know. I think it's that's a silly comparison, but you never know. I mean, who thought that a thing uh, NFTs would be sold for millions? Who of thought dollars? the Dogecoin would go 20x in one week? Yeah. It's one guy. <laughs> It's one guy doing that action for all we know. Billionaire just saying, what am I going to buy today? Because I have everything that I need and want. So. Yeah, so, but Ethereum shorter term on the four hour, a little more hopeful. Maybe we're going to get a bullish cloud forming soon. We already have the TK cross, but we still have a lot of uh, 
a lot of uh, ground to cover before we get back in here. All right, size pretty low. That's a good sign, right? What's the MACD look like? Uh, MACD, let's see. I'm gonna zoom in. MACD is not looking, curling up. Yeah, but it's below the zero line, right? So even if we get a, a, a bullish cross here, it's not as trustworthy when it's below the the, the, the zero line. Mm, okay. Um, so if I was a trader, I would be happy to be all in Bitcoin at this moment. And I'd look to get back in when I get a four for four on the four hour. Of Ethereum. Yeah. And then just for confluence, looking at the Renko, Renko charts, it just adds confidence to what I just said about the Ichimoku cloud. Um, we have a bearish uh, moving average cross and prices below. So that's a sell point right there. This, yeah, this would have been a, a, a short shorting like up here, you know. But again, I mean, you could also look at it as a good deal. So I don't know. <laughs> Some people look at this as a, a buying opportunity, but I don't think anyone should be shorting anything in this market. Yeah, if you have that option. Not. It's a buy, it's more like buy the dip season than uh, swing a short season. Yeah. yeah, but this is the Bitcoin show, guys. This is this I is know. what this is telling me. That's anybody, you know. That's what anybody's talking about. It's the Bitcoin show, so don't get don't get drawn into the idea of uh, buying other coins because they look cheaper. Yeah, don't just that like you look at that fifty seven thousand one fifty. Don't get discouraged by that. Like in ten years, five years, you're gonna be like, oh man, I remember it was only fifty seven thousand dollars. Now I did make a collection of assets or other cryptocurrencies that are currently outperforming Bitcoin. Um, we could kind of run through them really fast. Um, first one's Cardano. You could see Not we lately. have. We have, well, just as far as the Ichimoku clouds considered, we have all four, um, you know, bullish signs as far as I'm concerned. You know, you have a nice healthy retracement back to the Kijun line. So this yeah, would be- Yeah, that needed to cool off too. This would be an area to buy. Exactly. Like, you know, up here, when everyone's getting excited, like get excited, but guys- like, Oh, that's the Bitcoin I, chart too. Yeah, I, I yeah. only compare to Bitcoin guys. I don't compare to the shit coin US dollar. All right, man, you don't have to laugh at me. Yeah, so all these, are, ask. <laughs> all these are against Bitcoin. So, and the idea is if you are trading, you just want to get more Bitcoin. So ADA looks like a healthy buyer at this point. I'm not going to lie. If I was a trader, this is it's a good spot to pick some up. Um, except if you're looking at the four hour, that doesn't look too good. But just looking at the, the longer time frame on the, the daily side, um, Binance coin, Again, everything's bullish on the cloud. Um, polka dot. You know, it's coming everything's in good. Uh, Bancor. Nexo. Luna. Yeah, I don't know any of these ones right here. Theta. I think Theta has something to do with video streaming. Yeah. I mean, I remember them a couple of years ago thinking I was going to buy it. I was like, nah, I'm like, FTX token. Engine? Injective protocol. No, that's not, that's not engine. I don't know what that is. So it looks like I got one to cancel off my list here. But Ren BTC. So what I'm always looking for here is just to see what's outperforming Bitcoin, right? Because those are the projects that are always appealing just to see what's going on with them. You know, that, that's how I like get a, a signal to go research the project is if they're outperforming Bitcoin because that's an amazing thing to do. But is that the current price of GBTC right now? This is Abe coin. Um, I heard they stop taking clients right now. Yeah, but look at that price. That's um that's at a discount. 52? That's one one thousandth of a Bitcoin. That's what yeah. that represents. Oh, really? Yeah. So if you add a few zeros, that's a pretty big discount right now. If you go to, yeah, I paid a premium when I bought GBTC a few years ago. You know? Bitcoin right now, right? Is that how they come up with that? It's a one one thousandth yeah. of the price, which I believe is redeemable for actual Bitcoin. Mm. Well, yeah. If you have a retirement account, or you know, you hear about the stories, that might people. be more their institutional level investors than like me buying it off of uh, E Trade when I when I did it at the time. Right. But interesting but though. Yeah. So uh, it's at a discount right now. Yeah. 
Too bad you can't arbitrage that. That'd be an easy move. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, that's like, like a, that's like a ten percent discount right now. Interesting. I guess so. Interesting. But that's all I got on the charts, guys. I mean, everything's looking really clean, really healthy. Um, no signs of worries yet, as far as this cycle is concerned. Um, you could take a quick look at the uh, stock to flow model just to see where we are comparing to this uh, plan B's famous stock to flow model. And we are right on track. Oh yeah. And also there was another uh, thing too, where if you look at actual, um, the Bitcoin on exchanges is, is, you know, the supply is getting lower and lower. That yeah. flows from exchanges, yeah. But we're actually There's been a lot of big movers off of Coinbase Pro. Yeah. A little bit above the model at this very point in time, but we're right on, right along the line of it, which is pretty amazing. Um, right on money. The only constant in uh, the only constant in economic finance world, the econo economy, economy. How did you how did you phrase it? Uh, Bitcoin is the first constant in economics. Economics, constant variable. Um, Stock to flow model also just, you know, we're still in this light orange range. Um, the color of these dots represent the distance away from the next halving. Like a month, right? Every month is a dot. Uh, they're actually, every day is a dot if you zoom in on it. What was the halving? Red? Like the, the bright red? The halving is the bright red, yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So, you know, it's just another one of these things. It would be interesting to see when it gets to that green uh, area or even the yellow area when we start getting um, into those areas where we, where we peaked at the previous cycles. Um, and this is just a model, guys. I mean, it seems to be working out pretty well. Um, and I am a big Michael Saylor fan. He's kind of taken the show of 2020. And he famously said, throughout, throughout all your models, they're um, destroyed. because they're destroyed, <laughs> they're destroyed because, you know, he's a billionaire and if he gets 10 other billionaires to be making billion dollar buys, I mean, these people are going to buy this stuff and they're not selling it. So, um, uh, Dan held has been talking about the idea of a super cycle yeah, where, um, it might be the very last, uh, big adoption phase before the kind of price kind of calms down. Um, but that would mean running longer than four years. Is that what he means by that? Right. Running longer than four years, but also right. like a uh, much higher price um, sooner than later. Mm. Right. And also a less of a correction, right? We always see like 80% corrections or something like that. It wouldn't be like that. It would be a lot more stable at the end. Right. And we're, we're kind of seeing that now, right? You know, this is kind of a longer, steady growth with 30% retracements, you know, it's, it's, it's been kind of a grind up rather than in 2017, things just kind of exploded um, pretty fast, especially towards the end of the year, the end of the cycle. Um, it's just crazy yeah. seeing that price at 57,000 above. Yeah, just looking at yeah. that. It's like- And really no one really cares. Bad. Yeah, that's what I was gonna say. The mindset is like, oh, we're gonna get a new all time high. Like, right, that's cool. Yeah. Like whatever. Yeah. I was saying to some of my other friends, I'm going to be excited next time we hit a digit and then next time we hit a comma. Yeah. Like, I don't care about another 10,000 at this point, you know? I know. Those are going to be the big uh, moments for me. I've seen $10,000 candles. I mean, I don't, I don't know. We're already seeing some of those. How do you guys feel about, like the measure of euphoria right now? Do you think like it, we're pretty euphoric or? I don't know. I, I'm kind of just. I don't feel that way. I'm, yeah. I'm just. You mean the, in general, in the, in the public eye, so to speak? Public, yeah. yes. I don't think you're worried about Bitcoin. I'm, I'm happy. I'm happy, but I'm not like pissing on my desk. <laughs> you yeah. know, like, I feel like it's all going according to plan. Nice. Yeah. You know? yeah nice. Uh, yeah. I, I, I just, it's, you know, well, with a little bit of I told you so mixed up. I, I'm not, I'm, you know what it is? I'm not surprised. Like, I, we've predicted this. We've talked about this. Like, it just seems like what we've kind of prepared for is happening. And, you know, we're just along for the ride. Right. And the only worry that I have and probably everybody else that is in this space is not having enough Bitcoin. Yep. 
Yeah, yeah, I was panicking today a little bit, just, you know, as we we're approaching that all-time high, because the idea right now in these bull runs is we hit an all-time high, you have a big leg up, and then you wait for that 30%, 30% retracement, and then that's when you buy. And then you just want to get back in or buy more before you cross that all-time high again. Because you might not ever see that price ever again. You might keep running away from you right now, yeah. I mean, you probably will, but... You might not see under 50 ever again. And it's like, mm -hmm. just the thing about that, it's like, man, you know, where you were buying a hundred, a hundred dollars back, you know, when Bitcoin was $10,000 got you 0 0.01 Satoshis or, I mean, a uh, Bitcoin or uh, a million Satoshis. Now, you know, you got to spend $570 to get a million sats. So that's a big difference. That's, you know, yeah. a friend of mine just checked his old Binance account recently. And at the time he left, it was less than a thousand dollars worth of crypto on there, and he just signed back in. It was about eight thousand dollars worth now. Yeah, no, three exactly. years ago. Yep. Yeah, I, I told you I had a friend who did the same thing with uh, his Coinbase Pro account. He forgot that he had a Coinbase Pro, which is connected yeah, to Coinbase. Yeah. So he just was looking at his Coinbase all the time, and he asked, you know, I, I want to make a bigger buy. And every time I recommend a bigger buy, especially if you're like a New Yorker or something, just go on Coinbase Pro, you can make a limit order. And he went in there and he found like, I don't know, like half a Bitcoin or something. Oh, that's a nice find. <laughs> yeah, it's a nice find. And You're he probably so happy. Yeah, I mean, he hit me up. He, he was kind of in disbelief. He's like, what does this mean? Does this, does this mean <laughs> that this is mine? <laughs> Just found a new car. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, dude. Good for you. This means it's mine. Good for him. Congratulations to him. Yeah. It's yeah. good. It's not much better than finding a... It's like if you left twenty dollars in your pocket no, and you forgot more. about it, except it was Bitcoin somehow. Like, that's not like finding a twenty dollars pocket. That's like finding like money buried. But like you put twenty in, but then when you found it, it was five thousand. Like oh nah, man, that's like that's like you like like digging in your backyard and finding a trust like like a briefcase full of money. Yeah. <laughs> like <laughs> come on, man. it's like thirty thousand yeah. bucks. It's crazy. Nice. Oh, to nice not find. even know that it's there. So good for him. Yeah, that was a good one. I like to hear the good stories like that. Yeah, that's literally a briefcase full of money. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Come <Yeah>. on. <laughs> the best money that we have ever known. Oh. I don't know if you guys got any other uh, things you want to talk about. I think I'm good for this episode. It's good to be back, though, after two weeks. Yeah, yeah. And we'll definitely make sure we can get one going next week. For sure. Yeah, sounds good, guys. All right. Well, thank you, everybody. And uh, make sure you subscribe and like and uh, comment and all that other good stuff. Thank you. See you.